I've been using this product now every year since 2005 and I have a love-hate relationship with it because it, when it works, it works great. It, it saved me literally 30% of my heating costs. But it doesn't always work the way it's supposed to. Sometimes the tape sticks to the woodwork. It doesn't come off very easy. Uh, sometimes it'll peel the paint right off. Sometimes it parts away from the sidewall and it, it's got some drawbacks to it. So what I figured out is a, it's a new way to use this by creating a window insert that will prevent literally 100% of your air entering your window. So it's going to save a ton on heating costs and electricity for air conditioning. Okay, all you need to create a window insert that's going to guarantee 100% protection. No air gets through this window at all. You're going to need a piece of parting stop. This comes in an 8 foot length. It's half inch by 3 quarter inch. And you need some quarter molding. That's 3 quarter by 3 quarter. And this also comes in 8 foot lengths. What you're going to do is you're going to create a window well. A window doesn't normally come with a window well like you see here. This is something I had to make. So I use a piece of parting stop. It's half inch by three quarters of an inch and it just so happens to fit perfectly in with this corner molding. See that? Just like that. Add a gasket to that and you've got a really good seal on there. So with this one I've done an internal framework so it matches up with the existing molding and this will now seat right up against that perfectly all the way around the window. I have another option. I can put it to the outside of the window if I want and mount it this way and have an exterior window seal. Either way, it doesn't matter. It depends on your personal preference or the style of the window. Once these are done, they can be used in the corners to clamp them together. So these are going to get clamped and glued, and then when the glue sets up, you're going to shoot it with a nail gun. Bam, bam, twice here, and then bam, bam, twice there. And that will be the rest of your clamping process. Get on to your next window. So here I've chosen to use the inside of the well, the window well. So I'll put this up here like so, and you can see it just pops right into that corner and I've got a great little internal storm window. To make your window insert first we got to take some measurements. First you want to take your measurement A across the top. This is the inside measurement of your well, the window well. Also you want to do the bottom because a lot of times windows aren't exactly square. Plus you want to do vertical on the left side, vertical on the right side, and you're going to be averaging these together. Also, you want to measure from the top of your window well down to the center line so you know where to put your cross brace. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these 8 foot lengths, put them alongside the 2x4, put a rubber band down here to hold it in place. Now I've got to make some marks on here so I know where I'm going to be doing my cut lines. About an inch from the end. So I'll make a mark here and a mark here. Now I'm going to make one more mark that's going to allow for my actual cut line. So this is the point I'm actually, right there is the actual point I'm going to be drawing my 45 through and that's going to count for that little offset there. Before we put the shrink film on, I want to measure the distance of where I have to drill. So I set my square at 8 inches. And I'll mark from the outer corner, 8 inches out, 3 sixteenths in from the edge. And I do that on all four corners of the framework, and again, right here in the middle. So I've got there about 3 sixteenths from the edge. Two drill sizes, 8th inch and 16th inch. 
the eighth inch is going to create a passageway for our screw. It is a number four by five eighths long screw, and that's designed to penetrate through the wall and partway through the gasket, as you see here. So, what you want to do is you have to have a backing board underneath it. So, you want to have, you're going to be drilling through the insulation material. So here's what's going on. You want to put the backing board underneath the insulation, drill down straight through, all the way through the insulation and everything. And then you know your screw is going to pass right through that to bottom out. So this knows when you screw your screw down, you're going to be able to see that it bottoms out. And from that point on, it's going to start compressing the insulation each time you turn the screw. Now, Here's what's happen, what happens if you don't have this backing board. <laughs> First I got tape going on the inside track here. This is taped. All along that inside, not that side. Then you flip it over and you see I have the bottom side taped all the way around the perimeter. I haven't pulled this off yet. Here's what you do is you take a little slice here, reach in underneath there, pick that up, and fold it back to the outside. What these are now is these are going to be grab points for when you put your shrink film on, and it makes it a whole lot easier because these are just sticking points. All right. Next thing is you open up your plastic. One end is the terminal end that's open, and this part is folded over. So you take the folded over part and you lay it against your two dots up here with the excess hanging over both sides. Don't worry about putting a whole lot of tension on or green like that. Then you come down here and pull it from the center slightly and then lay it down on both ends. Now that we've used up all of our nice little grab points, we can take this sheet and fold it back over and stick that down to our other end. So, we've actually got a pretty good layout already. And all it is now is a matter of popping them up and tensioning it out in all four corners. I could actually let this go right now and blow dry it and it'd be just fine. And we want to pull, put it over the top like so, and just keep doing that evenly all the way, all the way around the window. And squeeze out the bubbles. Here's what I'm going to be using as the gasket material, the insulation around the edges. It's a sponge tape. It's 3 16 thick and 3 8 of an inch wide. Now, that's the reason why you drilled in here 3 16 of an inch from the edge is so you can penetrate this exactly in the middle if you position it properly and you want to go right flush with the outside edge. And you see here, keep it right to the outside edge all the way around. You're going to have an eighth of an inch gap right there. Here's a, here's a window ready for heat shrinking. But first, this is the screw that I use. It's a number four by five eighths inches long. And the reason I use that is that eighth inch hole will allow me to penetrate all the way through the hole so I can find the hole in the woodwork that I can screw this into. Now once I see that, it's flush, I now know that any further uh, turns on the screwdriver will cause more compression. So now I know that just doing a few turns, I am guaranteed a perfect seal. This window we mounted on the outside of the framework. You can also, as you saw before, mount it on the inside of the framework too. It doesn't really matter, it's all what the design of the window and your personal preference. Now the windows retail cost for everything to do a window is about $15.
it takes me now about two minutes to put a window in inside the framework and less than a minute to take it out. I will never have to do this again until I'm ready to change out the plastic if it ever gets yellowed or anything like that, but I don't suspect that's going to happen for years. So it's a one-time deal. It's a bit of effort to start. You've got a 100% seal. Never have to do it again. Now, this window is done. 